All right, welcome to the second video of uh, playing the Robot Club. Um, we left off uh, at the first chapter. Um, so if you haven't seen this stuff, uh, go to my first video. I play through all of this and I also have a little bit of uh, an analysis or some, some context uh, at the end of that video. So I would definitely recommend you check that out first. And then you can, yeah, if, uh, if uh, if this uh, this chapter is a little too boring, just skip to the end and see see those thoughts before we continue. So before um, we get started on the second chapter, I just wanted to um, show something that I uh, found um, off camera um, because in the last video I was a little bit, uh, I was a bit confused about the programming model. Um, if we were working with events or yeah, exactly what was going on if you're executing something. So um, I discovered that uh, the help page actually says exactly uh, how programs are executed and it's pretty, pretty useful to look at. So these are all the basics that we know about. Um, we know all this stuff. Um, but then on the last page, I think, is where it's interesting. Yeah, so here they say the last important thing to, do, to remember uh, about the instructions in a task is that they happen over and over again uh, in the order listed, many times a second. Um, so it's not a one-time list, but a series of commands that are repeated as quickly as possible, um, often 20 times a second, it, it says here. So that makes a lot of sense. That is why... Um, if you use one of those color sensors to point at the color purple, uh, it keeps spinning around it. Um, you know, when it gets back to the uh, to its base, um, it keeps spinning around it because um, it keeps uh, running that command that updates uh, its position uh, 20 times a second. So that kind of clarifies that. So it's uh, a little bit similar to an event loop, I guess, but uh, also commands that don't originate from events are um, run like that and then yeah you can think about uh, these things as just simple if uh, if then statements so um, that makes a lot of sense so let's uh, let's go back and um, do chapter two good afternoon I'm Harriet Larson director of communications for Omniscience this is our Vice President of Development, George LaRue, who has an exciting announcement to make. George? Thank you, Harriet. <laughs> Members of the press, my fellow scientists, citizens of planet Earth, today the sun rose and it was green. Omniscience is proud to announce Project Green Light, the discovery of an energy-producing algae which will unleash a brave new world of limitless power, a substance that is nothing less than life itself. We're committing the full weight of the corporation to unlocking the power of this algae for military and industrial applications, as well as a myriad of other uses that I am not at liberty to discuss. A new form of algae? What if it escapes from the lab into the ecosystem? There'd be some serious global bumming. Guys, we can talk about this later. Andrea's right. Hey, you! So, you've proved you can handle basic robot construction. Now you have to prove that you can think like us. And that means not to think. Depending on your role model. You have to prove you can be trusted not to give away our secrets. So, each of us will come up with an individual challenge. You can do them in any order, but you must successfully complete all five. Then and only then will you be a full-fledged member of the Robot Club and eligible to borrow my CDs. Ready? <laughs> all right. So, something is happening at Omni Science, and it sounds Omnius. Um. Hey! Come here, take a look at this stuff. There's a field full of recyclable cans and bottles at school. The principal says if we get it cleaned up by the end of the day, we can have a party there. Well, I want a party. Your challenge, design and build a robot that'll pick up the stuff and sort it in the right piles. Go on. All right, that sounds useful. 
Um, let's look look at what this looks like. Okay. Oh, interesting. So there's two piles. Uh, I guess we'll have to read the mission brief uh, to see exactly what we have to do here. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, bottles on the purple blanket, cans on the red blanket. All right. That sounds straightforward enough. Oh man, we have uh, some other things. So we have our... Uh, we know all of these, but these are new. Okay, so we have a glass sensor and a metal sensor, right? For the two different types of things that we have to pick up. And we have two randomizers. What is that? Use the maybe message to make an action happen 50% of the time. Ha! <laughs> That's neat. Um, you can also point in a random direction. Okay, and these are just both the same, sure. Uh, and these, I guess, are similar. Oh, interesting. We have a whole bunch of them. Medium, far away, medium distance, far away. If there's at least one metal object, if there are no metal objects. Okay, so I guess we finally get the use of like the full range of messages. Let's see if we have any new ones here. No, that's still the same. That's also still the same. What about these? Okay, yeah, so here we also have the full range. What's uh, point and aim? Oh, I think at some point you get weapons. <laughs> uh, so I guess this is to aim your weapons. I don't know. Uh, we don't. Oh yeah, here, aim weapons and other components. So we don't have that yet, but... Uh, uh, oh, and now I forgot already. Uh, we have to... Uh, Bottles on purple. Okay, let's just start with that. Bottles on purple. So, bottles purple. And these... Uh, uh, this glass, glass has to go onto the red uh, carpet. And then... Yeah, why not use the faster ones? Why not? Uh, and we need a scoop. And I don't see much need for the randomizer quite yet. So let's just try this out. So I guess we can just start by picking up all the bottles and then when we don't have any more we can uh, switch to the uh, to a task to pick up all the glass. Uh, so let's do that. So we say bottles is our start task. And we're going to point uh, towards uh, a bottle. We're going to drive. And then when there are no more bottles, we'll, we'll have a bottles deliver. Uh, oh, well, first, if we touch them, we have to sco actually scoop them up. And if there are n none left, then uh, we're going to go to the task switcher and go to the next task. So now let's make that next task. So that's like bottles uh, delivery. So... We're going to keep pointing at the blanket and we're gonna go. And then when we actually hit the blanket, we're going to dump. Um, let's see, yeah, that makes sense. And then after we've dumped, uh, we should actually, so I hope that this is sort of like an atomic operation that it happens immediately. Um, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that we don't have sort of like a delay uh, action or a timer or something like that, because then we can say um, to wait for a little bit. But I guess we'll just say also once we've uh, touched it, um, we can just go to the next task and hopefully this will be all fast enough. So then our ne next task is um, uh, class. Let's just call it class pickup. We can call this one bottles. Oops. Uh, bottles pick up. Um, and so we just have to do the same thing here. Where we point at some glass. We go. And then if we touch the glass, we scoop it up. 
And then if there's no more class, we go to the next task. Which is class delivery. And so now we go to the red blanket. go and then when we hit the red blanket uh, we can dump our stuff and I suppose we don't have to go back to our base so this should hopefully be enough all right let's see what happens oh look at this you can look at you can see the task uh, number at the top there okay so it seems to miss it very often so I guess these are just too fast. <laughs> they, uh, they're too fast for us. Um, so if we go a little bit slower, then uh, hopefully it will all be a bit more deliberate. So we just need a go instruction for each one of them. So let's see if this works any better. And so yeah, remember uh, these colors so that we can see it in the top left if we're in the task that we expect us to be. So yellow, purple, and then uh, blue, green. All right. Okay, so let's fix them up. Why is it having so much trouble uh, Well, okay. Um, so apparently that didn't go so well. Uh, did, did we put the right stuff on the right uh, side? Let's look at this again. So this was uh, bottles on the purple blanket, cans on the red blanket. Oh, I swapped them. <laughs> I thought those were, yeah, okay. My bad. So these, these are cans and uh, these are for the bottles. So let me just swap these. That is pretty dumb. But then also, uh, there's uh, this separate problem, right? Like where. Um, this first um, where yeah during the pickup if we touch them it just doesn't immediately pick them up so that's like a little bit concerning it's a little bit weird um, why uh, is it not doing that so I guess it takes like a little bit of time so should we actually switch to a different task to do the pickup and then when we don't touch anymore we can go oh I guess we can just say that here so if we do this and we're not touching something, then we should go. But if we're touching, then we should pick up. So we can just keep that in the same task. Hopefully that, that works. Um, let's try that out. Okay. So that went a little bit better in terms of picking it up. Uh, but now it's kind of stuck. Uh, so let's see. Oh, this should not be none. This should be uh, not touch. I did that right in the other case, right? But I didn't really see the bottles being delivered properly either. Um, so maybe we do have to wait here a little bit. So I guess what we can say here is when we see any um, any cans uh, then we can switch to the next task because then hopefully the dumping is done hopefully that's a good enough enough proxy and then here we don't need that because this is our last one um, so yeah let's see if that helps and it was a bit weird. It, it seems like it's somehow got stuck a little bit sometimes, where it is touching it, but it's not actually picking it up properly. Um, 
So I don't know what we can do to... Can we say like, go extra slow or something? Hmm... Not really. I wonder if we can... Uh, uh, what did I do here? This should just be go. Maybe we can have another one where if we're touch while we're touching it, uh, we can just have it back up a little bit. And so if the pickup doesn't succeed, we'll kind of like try again. And so we hopefully go kind of like back and forth and then it should scoop it up. Um, I wonder if we should do like a very slight turn as part of this. Um, is that sort of like turn backwards? Yeah. Not really. Okay, let's just try this first and see see how well it does. I guess we can do the same thing here. If we're, uh, no, if we are touching it. We can also use near and far, I guess. Um, but let's just try this first to back up a little bit once we touch it. Yeah, okay, so that's kind of what I expected. Okay, that's good. I mean, it does look a little weird, doesn't it? Okay, I mean it's going to work, but let's just try something slightly, <laughs> slightly better. Um, let's see if we touch it, we can just turn left a little bit. Let's see what that does. Here I'll do the same thing. <laughs> the the other. <laughs> The other thing was better, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, I mean it worked. <laughs> well, well, well. Maybe I was wrong about you. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's not dwell too long on it, but I just want to. It's. It, it is a bit weird to me how. Uh, uh, how this does just doesn't really work uh, super well. Um, yeah, I mean, what can you do? I mean, if it just doesn't always pick it up properly. Okay, let's just watch it one more time, but with with a, this one set to back up. Um, is there something else that we can do? Do we have other things? I mean, we have the randomizer. Um, we have the turbo thruster if we're near them, I guess. I don't know if that's so useful. Okay, let's just run it one more time. Yeah, this is not going to work so well either because we already saw this, but it's fun to watch. At least it, it looks a little bit more like it's doing some sort of work here. It's like it's trying to scoop it up. There we go. It looks it, it looks better. It's more pleasing to me. <laughs> well, well, well. Maybe I was wrong about you. Okay, so we have hopefully earned her trust now. Pizza delivery is next. Oh yeah, uh, we didn't watch the video yet, let's do that. I feel like a taste bud, at one with the slice. So, I made this deal. I get lunch orders from the kids in school, and Mario's Pizzeria delivers them to the main entrance. The problem is, how to get the pizza inside to the right customers. That's your order, build a pizza delivering robot. Oh man, pizza delivery. Let's see. It's pizza day, kids get to order out and eat in. Got to deliver pizzas to the hungry. Okay. If one's ready for more pizza, it'll turn on the light above the door. Okay. Give the kids in the hall a white berth. If you create too much commotion, the principal is going to shut us down. You never know when someone might try. Mm, okay, so we have to kind of uh, pick up the pizzas and not let them uh, lie around for too long. Otherwise they're just going to scramble over them. Uh, let's see what this looks like. Okay, so pizza comes there and then we have to bring it there. And if we just let it lie there, are they going to... Oh, they're not even taking it in this case. 
must have been fun to uh, to program those uh, <laughs> NPCs. Okay, all right. So let's see what kind of sensors do we have. We have a light sensor, and we have a heat sensor. The pizza is warm. Oh, that's so good. I love it. Um, yeah, and it has all the familiar things. What is this? A teleporter. Will magically transport your bot to another position in the environment. It's excellent for quick escape. That is very funny. Okay, so this is, I guess, when um, when the kids are coming too close to us and want to steal the pizza, we can teleport away. Ooh, what is this? We have a. <laughs> oh, this is great. Um, moves your robot on the cushion of compressed air. So it's not very energy efficient, but it makes up for it in speed. All right, but we've seen already that speed can be uh, can be dangerous, right? Like uh, can make make you miss your mark. We have also have a horn, so I guess that we can scare away the kids. Ooh, wow, we have a whole bunch more. Wow, this is a lot. Okay, let's uh, see. This is a motion sensor, moving object. So this is might be for the kids, I guess. Obstacle sensor. Okay, so this is if some sort of obstacle is in front of us. Okay. We have our randomizer. Oh, we finally have some sort of uh, timer. Interesting. So, ah, oh, this is great, right? So we can actually have actions to count and then we get messages based on what the count is. That is awesome. <laughs> Pogo Springs. <laughs> to move your robot around in a series of short hops. They have oh, so much more style. <laughs> I wonder if the pizza will stay on if we use these. And we have spider legs. Low energy, low speed. They're very precise. And they won't scuff up the floor. <laughs> All right, so, okay, we uh, we have a lot of options this time. Oh, and we have the pizza holder, of course. Okay, great. So, um, okay, let's start with the sensors that we definitely need. I mean, wait, why do we need a purple sensor? Did we have anything purple in the environment? No, not really. Okay, so we don't really need that. We need a light sensor. For the deliveries, we need a heat sensor to pick up the pizzas. Um, we need, of course, the pizza holder itself. I'll put that on this side. And then let's let's try the spider. Uh, I I kind of like the idea of the spider legs. And then I don't feel like we really need these yet. So let's just see how uh, how annoying the kids are going to be, and then we can decide on some routines for uh, moving uh, moving them out of the way. Oh wait, uh, oh wait, this was the timer, okay. Uh, oh no, wait, this, these are different. I missed this earlier. Oh great, so this is actually a timer, let's see. It automatically set to zero after every task transfer. Great. Use the timer message to make an action happen after a certain amount of time has elapsed. We can even reset it manually. Okay, wonderful. We actually have some real building blocks. Um, so that is quite good. So I guess um, the main set of tasks that we have is we uh, have to pick up the pizza and then we have to go to the light um, and drop it off and then go back to picking up the pizza and so forth. So I guess our start task is uh, pick up pizza and we point to a heat source. And we go. And then when we actually... Um, oh, this is empty or full. No, that's not what I meant. Um, when we actually touch the heat source, we're going to pick it up. Pick up a pizza. But that's not a guarantee, I guess, that we'll uh, actually uh, get it. Uh, so then we, have to, we can use this as a sensor that says like it's full. And I think it only has a capacity of one, right? Oh, uh, we first have to... 
Uh, do something. Okay, we are going to switch to our other task. What is its capacity? And carry pizzas. Or not a pizza on the tray. Okay, so that implies that, yeah, we just have room for one, which makes sense, I guess, <laughs> physically. So let's say, uh, deliver pizza. That's our other task. So, I'm just assuming that there is going to be a light, and if there isn't going to be a r light, I guess we'll just kind of like wander around aimlessly. So we'll point there, we'll go. I mean, we can even say, you know, if, if there is some light, and we can also do that in the uh, pickup pizza case, we can say if there is some heat source, then we have to go. Otherwise, we can just uh, remain stationary. That's fine. And then when we actually touch the light, I don't know, is touch the right word in this case? I mean, it, it's probably fine. Then we can say uh, drop it. And then once we're empty, so this is a very sort of symmetric way of building this program. And then we might need a global task for scaring off the kiddos, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll first see what happens here. Okay, yep, yeah, there's the pizza. We're on a pizza task, okay. Oh no, okay, they got some pizza. <laughs> oh man, this is the worst. They're kind of like gagging up on us, okay. So whenever we touch a kid, they automatically get our pizza. That is uh, terrible. Oh, this is this is the worst. <laughs> okay, so at least that part works. Okay, we accomplished it, but I guess that was not. Uh, a new frozen drink machine so we could party down and a 12 inch deep dish for the slice master okay i'm not too satisfied that was a very uh we almost didn't make it there we didn't get shut down by the principal but that was not uh, too good uh, so let's just uh, make a quick global task just to see uh let's scare off the kids <laughs> let's just see if we can improve on this a little bit because that was pretty terrible so I guess uh, we need uh, an obstacle sensor. So if there's like a big obstacle in front of us, uh, is that going to do it? Hopefully. Um, and I guess maybe we can use sort of like a horn. I mean, we can also just sound our horn con continuously. Um, let's try it like this. It's maybe a little bit more graceful. Uh, so if we're near some obstacle we're going to sound our horn and that's global okay let's try that again i mean okay the horn isn't really doing anything is it ah it kind of is Okay, hard to say how they are responding. Okay, let's just go to the next one. Come here, quick! I've been getting flowers and poems from a secret admirer. Listen. I'd like to take you riding on the back of my new Harley. But all I got's a mountain bike. And the seat is kind of gnarly. Yeah, I know, cornball. But I do want to find out who wrote it. There were two clues. There were some green paint chips found in the envelope. So whoever wrote it probably has one of those old green lockers at school. Also, some petals were missing from these flowers, and I'm betting they're in that very locker. Can you build a robot to find the locker and take a picture of it for me? Go! <laughs> okay, hilarious. Um, let's see, take a snapshot of its store with a camera. Okay, so we're getting some new gadgets. Uh, we already got so many, so many gadgets. We already offered to repaint the lockers in... Mmm, okay, so under the guise of uh, repainting some lockers, we're going to uh, do some uh, investigation. Keep working, but make sure you find the culprit. The culprit. <laughs> Remember your two clues. The locker must be green, and it's going to have flower petals in it. Your plants uh, sensor can't smell very far, so you have to uh, yeah you have to get up close. Happy hunting! 
Trigger the camera in front of the right locker. Okay, and it's a failure condition if we take a picture of the wrong locker. And we have to uh, repaint all of the lockers uh, blue, I guess. Um, yeah. Okay, let's just look at the environment real quick. Yeah, okay, so we have the green lockers and the blue lockers, and uh, our sensor can, I guess, smell when we're standing in front of uh, a locker that, ha that, uh, that has some flowers in it. Okay, so we have the... Okay, I have such a bad memory already. It's, uh, okay, green and blue. Okay, so the purple sensor is kind of useless here. Um, okay, <laughs> this is the best. We should have like sensors like this in real life, right? A plant sensor. And so it can only measure near. And then that's it, okay. So I guess we'll put our camera, which just has a go action. Put that on front of our thing. We'll use uh, this sensor. Right, we have a, a spray painter to actually do our job. Uh, which is, it's incredible, right? Like the secret robot club somehow got, got, uh, got a job to do the lockers. Makes you question how secret it is. Okay, we'll put this one on. <laughs> I missed that this has like a whole uh, like dish on top. Okay, that's great. So I guess it's fairly straightforward. We just do like we don't really need any different routines. We just do our job and then when we see this we take a picture. So that should be uh, pretty good. Okay, so our main job is to paint, so I guess whenever... Mm, we do have to be a bit careful because if we just happen to drive by a locker that is not green and we smell flowers, then that's no good, I guess. So, okay. In any case... Mm, yeah, okay, let's... Let's, uh, let's have some different tasks uh, already, so it's like... Uh, Go to green locker, and then the other one is uh, to um, uh, to process a locker. So we point towards green, and we go. And then when we actually touch green, I guess, then we're going to process that green locker. So we'll say process green locker. Okay, that's the maximum. So now we say, okay, well, first of all, if flowers are near, let's take a picture. Um, and otherwise, you know, while we are touching green, we're going to spray paint. And so at some point, um, I guess this is not even really necessary because when it's uh, not uh, green anymore, then we're just going to uh, go back to our task to find the next green locker. Um, yeah, I think that should do it. Let's see, it's... Pr we'll probably have a bug like we usually do. Oh, it's so fast. Oh man. <laughs> okay, that's... Wait, why is it flipping out so much? Um, <laughs> I mean, that is uh, a little bit crazy. Okay, so we we have to point towards it and then we kind of immediately go in this case and then we say we touch. Okay, so maybe we have to be a bit more graceful about it. So, so if in my mind, ideally we kind of point toward it and then we go and then when we touch it, we kind of process it, but then we have to back out a little bit, I guess. Um, but it's also interesting, like, it seemed to kind of... I guess it just goes into this task and then immediately out of it again. Um, so it doesn't really spend much time here, so it's kind of like this immediately succeeds, I guess, and then it doesn't touch anymore. Um, so yeah... I mean, let, okay, let's see that behavior again. That was like a little wild. It's so fast, like, check this out, what? 
I kind of got stuck here. Okay, we kind of got it by accident. All right, whatever. Marker 162. Him. He doesn't even play guitar. Do me a favor. Don't tell anyone about this, okay? Oh my god. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. All right, okay, that wasn't too satisfying, but I don't want to dwell on it for too long. Uh, let's just go to the next one. Howdy. It's not that I'm violent. I just like to watch robots fight. Motor to motor, tread to tread, ripping out wires and gears and guts. <sighs> A spectacular display of robotic destruction. So, I want you to build me a robot that can play my favorite game. Survival. Okay. Uh, not violent at all. So, I guess this is the first time that we're actually going to do a BattleBot style thing. There's also a different mode in the game to duel. And I think that um, when the game came out, they had a website where you could upload your robot and have them fight uh, other robots. Or... Uh, could download other people's robots and kind of have your robots uh, go against theirs. So uh, that's what we'll be doing. So I guess we have another robot that we're up against. Okay, okay. It's not amazing, but it does have a gun that uh, shoots at us. All right. Not bad. Okay. So let's see, what uh, what kind of weapons do we get? Okay, we have an energy level. That's useful, I guess. So we can um, take different decisions if our energy level is low or high. Oh, wow. We have a tennis ball launcher. We can use the aim action. Okay, so we can kind of like aim this thing separately from our driving direction. We have even a damage level indicator. That uh, should also be uh, be useful. Uh, and then we have a whole bunch of them. So we have a motion sensor, we have the counter, randomizer, obstacle sensor, timer. I thought we also had a timer here. Yeah. Okay, so we have a ton of things. Do we have like a metal detector? Uh, we have pogo springs. Um, obstacle sensor, I guess. This is probably, you know, the other robot is going to be the only obstacle in the in the environment. So I guess we could just use that. Oh wait, we have a tech sensor. Okay, that's a bit more directly relevant. Yeah, let's do that. So we use this thing. We use uh, this. Um, so I guess the agility is kind of useful. So let's try to use that. Is there some way to detect sort of like the things that the uh, the other robot is shooting at us. Um, I guess we can use a randomizer to kind of just make our our own uh, movement a bit more unpredictable. That way we don't have to actively dodge. We can just kind of like move around randomly. And let's try out the pogo springs just for the heck of it. So... Um, I don't know exactly what we're going to do yet, so I guess we can just move and then with sort of like a random chance we can kind of like move in different directions. So maybe we will like turn left and maybe we'll turn right and maybe we'll do pogo springs. And so, I don't even know, like, it, uh, you know, they said that this happens 50% of the time. Yeah, and this thing runs, like, many, many times, so I don't know if it will be, like, extremely erratic, but... Okay, whatever, let's just see, and then I guess it's useful to have a global task. Uh, to just shoot these things at them. Well, there's probably a maximum. How many do we have? Mid-range weapon. Okay, so I guess we kind of have to try to approach uh, the, the other robot a little bit at least. So I guess we can uh, also have a maybe to kind of like approach them. 
Okay, this might be too weird, but we'll see. So I guess if they're in medium range, uh, well, we also have to point it. We always have to aim our weapon towards them, so that will run continuously. So just be like tracking them, hopefully. And then if they're in medium range or if they're near, uh, we just shoot. Let me arrange that. Okay, so that looks a little nicer. Okay, let's just see how far we get with this and maybe we have to uh, revisit this a little bit. Okay, we're driving towards them a little bit too much. I think actually that just not pointing towards them might be might be better. Uh, because the environment is not that big and we're kind of like driving around fairly uh, irregularly. I don't, <laughs> I couldn't even see the pogos doing anything, but whatever. Um, let's just see if this, if this is any good. And I think also, you know, if we do happen to touch them, we should also uh, fire. Okay, let's just see what this does. Okay, we do shoot at them. Oh, we're, we're using way too much energy. Okay. Man, this is uh, this is harder than it looks, huh? Okay, so let's get rid of uh, some of these things. I don't think this is too useful. This might be a little crazy too. Um, kind of like these ones from earlier. So... What if we just go... And yeah, so the maybe didn't seem to do all that great. Hmm. Okay, let's just see see what this does. Okay, so it's pretty slow. It shoots them on occasion. But we're too much in straight lines, so it's like it's too easy for them to get us. Oh man, this is a lot harder than it looks, uh, which is good. This is not uh, some dumbed down thing where you really have to beat them. So this this stuff seems to be working pretty well. We're definitely, you know, firing at them. We just have to be able to dodge them a little bit better. So let's see. Is there some way that we can see that there's? I guess if there's an option, like maybe we can detect if they. If they are shooting at us, um, so maybe like the the motion sensor is useful for that. So, what if we just teleport away whenever we see that, whenever we see a motion near us? Uh, let's just try that. Uh, actually, we can put that in our global task. Um, let's see what that does. So motion near us, teleport away. Oh dear. We just run out of energy so quickly with that. Okay, that is not so good either. Um, I guess when we are near, we, all, we we want to dodge, right? So let's have a dodge task. Dodge all, dodge, there we go. So let's remove this from the global set and we'll say, okay, if we detect the other robot being too near, uh, then we'll go to the dodge task. Oops, that's the global task. And we don't really need this one. I don't know why I put it on. Because we have the tech sensor already. Uh, we don't need this one either. Because that's just too much energy. Uh, I guess also when we're touching them. Just to be extra safe. We also we definitely want to dodge as well. So if this is happening. What do we do? We basically. Want to. Uh, uh, no. We want to. Uh, point away 
and just go real quick for for just a brief moment. Um, so maybe it's useful to get like this little boosty thing. Yeah. Point away and we'll boost. And then we still want to go with this thing. And maybe we'll, um, yeah, I guess this is probably fine because this pointing away is going to take some time. So we'll probably kind of like make a circular motion as we're doing this. Um, and then when we're far away enough, we can uh, switch back to our main task. So let's say like medium is probably fine because we don't want to go too far. So if we're medium or if we're far, we uh, switch back to our main task. Okay. Um, and then I guess in this case, we kind of like, I mean, I, I guess that this, this sort of random movement is probably fine-ish. We could also kind of switch between different tasks here to kind of like move a little bit differently. Let's just try this thing again. It's like maybe we'll make like a 90 degree left or something and maybe we'll just go forward. And so like 50% of the time we'll go left, 50% of the time we'll go forward. Um, well, that's not exactly how it works, right? But um, and maybe, yeah, I'll do a may maybe, maybe right. Um, okay. So sometimes we'll just keep doing what we were doing before. Um, sometimes we'll pick one of these. It will skew probably somehow. Okay, whatever. Uh, probably doesn't matter all that much. Let's see what this does. Oh, we don't move at all now. That's kind of funny. We got shot at so much. Oh no, this is the worst. Wait, we didn't actually go to that other one. So... Interesting. Um, yeah, I guess it's just all happening too fast, so... That's not really helpful. Okay, let me just get rid of that idea. And I'll just do what we were doing before, which is just try forward and then hit the wall and then it's probably okay. But we never went to the dodge task, so maybe... I don't know how near near really is, but maybe we should also consider medium here. Let's see. Okay, now we dodge. Okay, now we're... Okay, so you ne never actually see it switch to the dodge task, but... Okay, we're definitely hitting them, but they're hitting us more. So... Yeah, okay, so I think I also want to make like a medium. Uh, distance trigger this for us. And then this global thing. Yeah, okay. So... I wonder if this is also, like maybe we can just always fire at them. Or we'll, we'll see, maybe the ball will hit the ground or something, but let's just see what happens if we just always go. We can leave these others that they shouldn't hurt. Okay, so we dodge them and we shoot. Okay, so that works. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, so at least this seems to be quite okay. Just running away from them is not that great because then they pretty much always just hit us in the back. So this dodge task is not that good and it's also just this thing just takes a lot of time uh, or like uh, costs a lot of energy. So we might not want to use that. Um, so maybe we should actually bring in the timer, right? So, uh, because ideally we kind of want to move perpendicular to them. Like if they, they are kind of, you know, going here at us, we kind of want to kind of like circle around them a little bit. So how do we do that uh, nicely? So, hmm. So we kind of want to, yeah, there's no point perpendicular. <laughs> uh, but I guess we can point away from them and then turn and then go a little bit and then point away from them again and then turn. But so we 
you know, if, if we just put that in the same task, that is just going to be too much. So we might want to have a little bit of a timer in between there to switch between those states. Um, yeah, okay, let's try that. So I guess our dodge is our point away and go. So we already have this one. And then uh, I guess we can make our main task sort of like... Uh, uh, or like, sure, let's do this. Go for uh, like, yeah, go 90 degrees. So what we can do here, I think that there is a task that is like uh, 90 degrees left or right. And so let's just try this and then wait, wait a little bit. So let's see how does this timer thing work. Uh, this is a counter. This is the timer, and this is another counter, okay. So we'll use our timer, and they said that they reset it. Um, so here, let's say like, so 90 degrees left, and hopefully like two seconds should be enough of doing that. And then we can go back to our main task. So we dodge, we go, and then we go to uh, our 90 degrees. Eh, this is not really what we want, so we want to point away. Okay, so we want to do this after also a little bit of time. So maybe we'll like point away and go for two seconds and then we'll turn left for two seconds. And then let's remove this and then we'll just go forward. Um, and then when we're too near or we touch or we're medium far, then we uh, uh, go dodge again. Okay, that doesn't seem too unreasonable. Let's see uh, if that does if that does anything. Oh man! <laughs> okay, so turn ninety degrees is not exactly what you want. That just uh, just rotates the. Okay, so that's. I don't think it's kind of intended to work like that. Uh, <laughs> that's very funny though. So basically, I guess we could keep it sort of in the same task then, where we say when it's like that, we turn 90 degrees and that's sort of like one one action. And then we reset the timer again. Um, or I guess we go back to our main task. Hmm. I don't like this too much. Yeah, we just got stuck in the corner. This is no good. Okay, let's just try to kind of go around in in, in like a big circle. That might be uh, that might be nicer. So maybe we can do that in one task. So let's just get rid of all of this, and we'll say. Um, We just kind of like want to go forward a little bit and then after a second we can kind of like turn. Let's just, oops. These names don't really, okay. I, let's just do this because I don't really know what we're going to do in all cases. So let's just go and then we'll turn left a little bit. Or actually, yeah, sure. Um, then after a little bit, we'll switch back. Should we also go? Is that kind of like you can do both? I'm not super sure. And let's not do this. Let's just see if we can kind of like kind of go in a circle because then it will be very hard for them to to hit us it's too bad that there's not really a good sort of edge uh, edge detection um, oh I'm also curious does this say when you get hit no it just says like me high medium low okay uh, okay let's see if we kind of go in a circle like this which I would expect <laughs> oh man, it's not at all what we want, huh?
That's funny though. Um, how can you have it just move left for a little bit? <laughs> oh dear. So I guess we'll make a turn left. Okay, what if we just don't do this at all? I guess I haven't really played with this too much yet. What if you just go and turn... No, no, we saw that earlier. Then it goes just in circles. Because it executes this and then it probably waits a little bit and then it goes through this again. Um, but what if we... Hmm. Or no, yeah, that's actually a little bit weird. Why is it doing that exactly? Yeah, why? Well, <laughs> how can we have this thing uh, drive around in the circle? That shouldn't be too hard, right? Um, or should we use a, a different... No, I mean, this one should be fine. Low energy. Yeah, that's good. Um... Yeah, okay, so we go, we turn left, and then we just immediately switch back to our main task to go, that seems. If, if that turn left command gives us a pretty big turn, then that might be what we want here. And we can even put a maybe in front of that, so that, but let's try this first. Okay, so that's more like, that's more like what I expected. We just make, okay, but we kind of want to make bigger turns. Oh no! Shoot, I... I Press the wrong button. Robot has caused an error in robots. Oh no, okay, let's restart it. I hope that... Our... Okay, so this is still mostly saved. Okay, we have to recreate this though. That's all right, that's all right. We'll do this, we'll do this. Okay, so we want our global, or like, okay, share one. Uh, okay, I mean, these are fine too. Um, actually, let, let's take those other ones so we kind of understand how it works. And we also wanted uh, to put, uh, what was the other thing? We want like a, a timer. No, this is a counter. Maybe we'll need a randomizer. Okay. So here we said we go, and then after a little while we go to the next task. So one second increments is actually maybe not that great. We can also use that counter, and then we can get maybe a bit more precision. Um, in fact, let's just maybe do that. Does it also reset in between tasks? No, it doesn't look like it. So that's cool. You can preserve some states um, going between tasks. So you can actually pass arguments uh, into a function, so to speak, uh, if we want to. So I guess uh, we can say like after, I don't know. Let's try seven iterations. We'll go to that other task. That's our task two. Here we always reset this counter. Uh, oh, and we also have to increment the count every time here, otherwise nothing is going to happen. And then we'll turn left and go back to the original task. Yeah, let's see if we can kind of get us to drive in a pretty, in a pretty nice circle. I guess the very first thing that we want to do is we want to kind of like turn 90 degrees so that we start a good circle. Um, Let's actually do that. I'll create a new start task and we'll turn turn 90 degrees right, right? So then we'll aim sort of upwards and then from there, hopefully we can make a nice circle around the whole thing. Uh, so we can kind of do, do we need a timer really here? Maybe I can just do, do that and then go to the start task or to, to task number one. And while we're doing all of this, uh, we can have our global task that just keeps aiming and keeps firing. Let's try this. 
Okay, so this is too small of a circle now. So I guess we can tweak this number a little bit. So we want this to be a little bit uh, lower so that we... Uh, no, higher. So that we wait a little bit longer before we go to that other task. And then if necessary, we can even put a maybe here. Uh, or we can kind of like have multiple tasks to, to stack up timers, right? Because it doesn't go beyond nine. Yeah, I mean, if we make a circle a little bit bigger, we should be dodging most of them. So this is quite promising. If we just throw a maybe in here, we should kind of like get twice as big of a circle, right? Because it will only do this half of the time. Oh. That's not at all what I expected. Wait, why is that not working? Uh, doesn't this return true like 50% of the time? I mean, that's a little bit surprising. Okay, let's just look at that again. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to be turning. Okay, sometimes it does turn, but it's it's just too too sporadic. Okay, let's just make another task three. So we can basically here say we reset it. Um, I guess how do we do this? Um, yeah, we want to reset it and then, but then we want to keep counting. Okay, so this is basically, uh, we can hack this together, right? We can say if it's over nine, reset it, but then keep incrementing it. And then if we're at like seven or something like that, we'll switch to, uh, uh, to task number three. And we don't need this here. And then here we'll actually do the turn left and then go back to the main task okay so now we've sort of stacked two timers on top of each other let's see if we can get like a nice circle this way oh it's still uh still a very small circle okay wait actually let's look at this okay so we're switching very rapidly between all those tasks uh, but it's mostly in this one and that one. Okay, so... Um, very interesting. But it does seem to be doing it, but it's just way too often still. Oh man, why can't we just have a timer that is uh, less than a second? Um, or I guess we can try sort of like different increments. So what if we use a timer for one second? Um, and we'll actually go to uh, to this one straight away. Instead of doing turn left, we'll do like a, a 90 degree turn. And so then we should kind of like go for one second like this, go for one second and so, and so on. Okay, I mean we barely did it, but you won, I lost. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> okay, let, let's let's spend a few a few more minutes here. Um, what if we just use a different one? Because we can also just uh, you know make our cir circle bigger by driving faster, right? So what if we keep so far? original plan here and um, we say if this thing is bigger than oh I also forgot to reset it here that is actually pretty important so that might also not have helped okay so let's cut this and oh we can't turn with this thing Ugh. okay I guess we'll do the these which are like sort of uh, 
not super fast, but also not super slow. And then we'll... Okay, so it's pretty important that we we set it. Hopefully these are a little bit faster as well. Then here, yeah, we go for 9. So at 10, we switch to that task. So then in that task, we reset it. Um, we don't want to turn left. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. Um, so here we want to go to pink task. And then here, yeah, we reset it. And then when we're at 7, we go to this one. Um, yeah. And I guess we also have to go. So otherwise we'll stay stationary. And I don't know if we have to explicitly say that here as well. Actually, let's just do that. Okay, let's see what this does. Okay, that's a pretty good circle. Okay, so we dodged it. Not, a, not extremely well, but not too terribly. Okay, but then we kind of get stuck on one side and we're not turning the right way anymore. Okay, at least it's kind of like doing more, more what I expected now, uh, which is good. So... Yeah, how can we improve on this? Um, yeah, I guess we could kind of go a little closer to them or something. Or like, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like this uh, driving around helps helps all that much in dodging. Like we dodged them a few times. Um, but then we also kind of got stuck. Is there some way that we can discover that we got stuck? I guess we could kind of like every once in a while just, just teleport away and uh, <laughs> take that hit. Um, or just kind of like randomly turn around when they're too close and start a new circle somewhere. I don't know. I don't love those ideas. What if we just do Pogo Springs? Will we out jump them? Let me just remove this for a second. Okay, they don't work very well. <laughs> you can just, you don't even really see anything happening. Okay, so those are pretty worthless. Um, okay. Hmm. Okay, what if instead of here we kind of like just, uh, point at them. So then we don't really drive in a circle, but we kind of point at them and then kind of like go in that general direction for a little while. I guess we can point at them. Um, yeah, but hope. I think this is not like, it won't immediately turn around to them. It will go, it will point at them for a little bit. And so if you're thinking about it that way, uh, you know, they, they are here and we're kind of like, Hopefully just pointing at them and kind of like making a circular motion around them that way in the same way, you know, that uh, the sun pulls on the earth and we kind of like ro uh, we have a force pointing towards the sun, but we don't we never fall right into them. So maybe this could work in a similar manner. Let's see. Oh, but now we OK, so it does immediately turn very quickly. No, it doesn't. Oh, we just. Oh, Wait, why does this happen again? Oh my goodness. That is a bummer. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. I guess that is it for this video. I will, uh... oh no, wait. Did something happen there? Okay, let me just restart this thing. <laughs> OK, 
okay so yeah there it just remains stationary and so i probably just forget to for, I forgot to add the go command somewhere but it did seem to turn like just a little bit uh, every once in a while um so i'm not super sure we'll have to try that again okay that's good okay so it still has this great okay let's just uh, try that one more time and then we're, we're really done with this exercise uh, i guess we can keep these ones that is fine i guess every second is also fine in this case if we're going to point towards them uh let's see what this does yeah the counter's not really doing anything okay sure It is interesting, it does sort of like point very quickly towards them. Okay, so that was not too great. Yeah, so this pointing, it's a little too fast in some sense. Um, I think these threads are actually helpful here because these spider legs can just kind of move in any direction, I guess. So let's just see if, if it works if we change this. A little bit. Um, yeah, let's maybe get rid of these. Oh, and uh, we have to. Oh no, we don't have to reset. We uh, reset because we use the timer. Yeah, I still. I still. Okay, I still like this. This better. So let's just do this again. We go here. And then from here we reset it, when on 7 we go there, here we actually also have to reset it. Uh, we increment it, we increment it here, and then we have to do this at the very end. Okay, let's see how this does. Okay, we're very much not uh, dodging them though. <laughs> so we're just, we're just driving towards them. Wait, did I do the thing? Where, oh, we want to start off uh, turning like that. But then I guess when we get in a state like this later, um, I guess we can have like some chance of just turning a lot. Okay, let's see. This is happening again. Okay, that was not very good. Um, I guess another option is we could drive up and down just very quickly. Uh, and hope hopefully we can kind of like dodge them like that or like drive up and down and then every once in a while kind of like go go left and right for a little while or something like that. Um, I hope that this doesn't keep happening. Okay, so let's try that. <laughs> so I guess we'll have our one task to go. Well, we still want to turn right. Yes, that's fine. Then we'll go. And then after a second, let's go to this task here. And then after a second, we want to basically... Oh, interesting. Yeah, we basically just want to um, do a U-turn. Okay, wait a, wait a minute. We can simplify this a little bit so we can make a right turn then go there and then here we basically go and then after uh, after a second we uh, we do a u-turn and then we just keep going right don't need this and then like after every maybe four seconds or something well okay so we do want to switch tasks so that this thing gets reset. Um, okay, so never mind. So let's switch and we'll say we do a U turn. 
and then we go back to that initial task. And when we do that a bunch of times, we want to uh, kind of make a turn uh, to the side. So we can count, I guess, every time that we get in here. Okay, this is probably, this is so elaborate that it's probably not going to work. <laughs> um, but in any case, we can say something like, okay, if we done, I've done this uh, for four seconds or, uh, or so, then we're going to switch to this task. So we have to do that here. And then here, we uh, reset the counter. We make a uh, 90 degree left, so that's fine. And then, uh, yeah, we go back to our initial task of uh, driving for a second and then coming back and uh, coming back for a second and so on. Okay, so I expect that we kind of like, you know, go like this and then we turn and we go like this. Um, we might actually have to reason about this number, right? So, um, because uh, this is how many U-turns we've done. So, um, we have like our first U-turn here, and our second U-turn here, our third U-turn here, and our fourth U-turn down here. So we probably want to turn right in that case. Uh, so let's make this a, a right turn. But I'm probably overthinking it. Uh, let's see if this is any good. Oh no, we hit the wall already. I mean, it's kind of doing what we wanted. It's dodging something there. Still not good enough. Okay, whatever. <laughs> that is enough. I want to do the last one. Hi, ready for my challenge? You know Einstein, right? The school mascot? What a goat. Well, the dweebs at Kepler Junior High keep stealing him. And I need you to build a robot that can stand guard and sound the alarm. Our school's honor is at stake. All right, we have to guard the goat. Let's see. If you detect a thief, use the siren to sound the alarm, but don't cry wolf. Right, we don't want to have uh, false alarms. All right. Let's uh, see how this happens. Okay, so here's our little goat. Here's Einstein, and then at some point, oh man, that's that's amazing. <laughs> okay, that's great. Okay, so we have our siren. We have our animal sensor. Uh. Right, so I guess we have to drive around and see if there's uh, if there's motion that is not our uh, animal. Is that the idea? Or an obstacle that is not... Okay, so yeah, what if we just uh, kind of like drive around and when we detect an obstacle and, and there's no animal nearby, then, uh, then we sound the siren. So this might be uh, tricky. So, okay, so we say if there's an obstacle near. Um, then let's switch to the other task. And then here we can, uh, we can see, okay, if a goat is near, then we just go back. Uh, but if, uh, yeah, I guess this is already sort of an else because we should have switched back at this point. So otherwise we'll sound the siren because there was an obstacle and it wasn't, and it wasn't a goat. Um, okay, let's try this.
Yeah. Okay, that's pretty much as intended. Congratulations, you passed with flying colors. Cool. Well, I'm not too uh, too satisfied with the survival duel yet. Um, but uh, it will have to do for now. I'm going to stop here. And uh, next time we can check out uh, the next chapter. Catch you then. Okay, so one more thing. I just couldn't help myself and I played a little bit more with the uh, dueling level. They had some uh, tips actually. Um, to uh, dash in an attack. Um, that didn't seem to work that great. Uh, they do say like, you know, you can kind of go and then turn 90 degrees and then run away. Um, so sort of a variation of that seemed to kind of do what, uh, what we originally tried to do. So uh, uh, in the beginning we just go and we point at them and we try to get near. But then when we're in medium range we uh, switch to this task. And if for some reason we find ourselves in this uh, uh, in this task being like really close, we uh, we just kind of very quickly back up. Um, so that seems to, I guess in, I can even say sort of like uh, far here so that uh, these two won't conflict. And then when we're in medium range, then we're going to kind of uh, uh, turn, turn left. And so here we do 90 degree left and then we go to the third task. And the third task is to just go. And then when we're far again, then we're back to our original task. So we kind of uh, hopefully straddle this line of medium and far. Um, and so, yeah, let's let's play with that. We can maybe make this this one a little bit less radical and make it a regular turn left. And then globally, we're still doing the same thing, which is like we always are aiming. And then when we're uh, in one of these ranges, we'll, we'll fire. Uh, so let's see what happens. Okay, so I think it worked a little bit better with the 90 degrees turn here. Uh, here. Because this is just a little bit not quite enough. Yeah, so this is, you know, we're kind of like keeping our distance here. And we're dodging sometimes. Okay, now we're getting too close though. <laughs> but we're definitely doing better than earlier. Yeah, so we, st we still have some health left. Oh, and it's crashed again. Uh, okay, so that, that was doing a little bit better. I think the, the turning left uh, always is not that great once you're uh, close to a wall and you can't actually uh, move away. So maybe we can do something at some point where um, we can detect how long, if, if we're for, for like more than a second or two seconds or so uh, in the near range and then use the teleporter uh, to kind of get, a, get us out of a bad situation. Uh, but in any case, I just wanted to share that. That seemed to work a little bit better. Uh, but it's pretty fun to, uh, <laughs> you can get uh, pretty complicated programs, I guess, doing this.